Hi, I'm Dave Balmy. I'm from Colorado State University, and today I'd like to talk to you about one of our recent papers called Visual Object Tracking Using Adaptive Correlation Filters. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at a vehicle tracking scenario. The video comes from YouTube. It's a video from a police helicopter using a thermal camera. The helicopters in a police chase. And this video has a number of tracking challenges. First of all, it's a pretty long video. It's about eight minutes. There are multiple occlusions, rotation changes, scale changes, and camera motion, all which uh, cause difficulty for the tracker. The tracker that we're using is based on correlation. What makes it unique is that it uses a minimum output sum of squared error filter. This filter produces much sharper peaks than what you'd get if you used a simple template. It's adaptive, so it changes as the appearance of the vehicle changes. You can also do occlusion detection and automatic recentering using this filter. One thing that makes this algorithm unique is its speed. If you compare this algorithm to other popular trackers, you'll see that those other trackers have difficulty keeping up with full frame rate videos. In our case, we've got our tracker running much faster than real time. So what you're going to see today is our research code, which is written in Python, and it runs at about 250 frames per second. We've also got a version that we're trying to commercialize that runs at well over 600 frames per second. So what can you do with this extra speed? One thing you could do is track multiple objects with a single CPU. Another thing you could do is uh, the tracker will scale very nicely to more limited CPUs. So if you have a scenario where you have strict power, heat, or weight requirements, uh, this is a good way to do tracking in those scenarios. So for this vehicle tracking scenario, you might think about putting this tracker on a small UAV. So now we're going to switch gears and look at the tracking video. So this is the output of the tracker. One thing you'll notice early on here is that the tracker runs into a problem and right about here you'll see a flash. Um, that's a video edit that I put in to indicate when I've reinitialized the tracker. Um, in some cases the the car gets occluded and while well, the car's occluded the camera shifts. And so here's another example. And so when the car comes out of that occlusion, the tracking window is no longer near the car, and so the tracker basically gets lost. And at that point, we either have to we have to reinitialize the track somehow, either by manually doing it, which we've done here, or by uh, redetecting the car using automatic methods. So. Um, As we go on here, you'll also notice that when the car gets occluded, the tracking window turns into an X, and that's basically our occlusion detection working. When that X pops up, it means the tracker's detected that, that it can no longer see the car, and it's basically stopped processing, and it's waiting for the car to reappear. So in this case, you know, this is probably the hardest occlusion, because the the it's a long occlusion and the vehicle also rotates during that occlusion and so when it when it when the vehicle comes out in that case the tracker can't reacquire it because it's changed appearance by so much for these other occlusions the car reemerges from the occlusions use it with approximately the same appearance and the tracker can detect that the car is returned and it restarts tracking so that's how we do the the occlusion detection. Um, so at this point I think the tracker works for about four minutes uh, without any failures. And you can see it's handling the occlusions very well. 
Um, I'll talk you through the display. Obviously the red box around the car is the output of the tracker. If you look at the bottom of the display, you'll see three boxes there. The one on the left is the input to the tracker, and so that's basically just a cropped version of what's in that tracking window. The middle box is the correlation filter that we're using to do tracking. And then the right box is the output of the... Uh, and that's basically what you get when you correlate the input with the filter. And so the if you look at that output, you'll see there's a nice sharp peak in the output. That basically tells... That, that's how we figure out where the car is within the tracking window and how we track the car from frame to frame. You'll notice that as we move along here and this car rotates and that the filter actually adapts to that to the changing appearance of the car. Um, that's one trick that we use to uh, create a more stable tracker. Another thing you'll notice is that the filter kind of resembles the car but it's in many ways very different. You know, it kind of highlights the edges and the wheels and stuff like that. And what, what's going on there is that the filter's been trained specifically to produce a nice sharp peak for that car. So uh, if you were actually going to do this sort of tracking with a simple template, what the filter would look like is it, it actually looked a lot like the input. Um, so in this case, we've actually trained the filter so that to produce that very nice peak. Um, so anyway, I think this is one of the more interesting parts of the video. The car here is going to go into a town and it's going to be occluded by buildings. Um, this is probably one of the more interesting occlusions coming up here in a few minutes or in a few seconds right about now so here you can actually see how the tracker stops and the window just stops where it is and it waits for the car to reappear and because the the motion of the camera is moving at about the same pace as the car that works very well when the car comes out it's right there. Coming up we're going to have a, another occlusion and in that case the car gets occluded and then the uh, the camera actually shifts like right there. And so in that case the because the tracking window or because the camera is shifted the tracking window is no longer over the car and as a result you have to manually reinitialize. So in the future, one of the things we're planning to do is to do camera motion analysis and more motion analysis on the car. Right now we're not doing anything, we're just visually tracking. Um, but with that motion analysis we can do a much better job of predicting where the car is going to come out of the occlusion and update the tracking window accordingly. And hopefully if we do that we can eliminate a lot of these manual restarts. So at this point, you know, I think most of the interesting parts of this video are done. So if you like this video, um, you probably want to keep an eye on my YouTube page. I want to post some more videos about how, well, more technical details on how these filters are constructed. I'd also like to look at some more application areas and stuff like that. So keep an eye on my YouTube channel. You might want to subscribe. I also would love to hear some feedback. So rate, uh, rate this video. Give me some comments. Let me know what you're thinking. If you, uh, if you work on visual tracking, I'd love it if you'd post some, some video responses. You know, show me what your tracker can do on this video.